Hi there, this video is about gradational processes and our goal is to learn how weather and erosion changes the landscape. So by the end of the uh, video, I want you to be able to do several things. The first thing I want you to do is be able to explain what that process graduational means. I want you to be able to explain what weathering means. I want you to be able to explain what mass movement is and then explain in more depth and detail deposition erosion and transportation and then we're just going to look at the effects of rivers on landscapes so they're just a few things that i want to go through you can see those keywords there um, make sure in your coordinate notes you've got those and you definitely know the meaning of each of those okay so graduational processes um, when we look at landscapes Basically, there is two different ways in which we can create landscapes. We've got tectonic activity, which is this sudden huge amount of movement uh, resulting in huge amounts of um, change, um, but over a short period of time. So if we look at volcanoes, um, when they erupt, they can destroy um, huge mountains but at the same time they can create land um, earthquakes they can um, when they occur they can be very very destructive and that's what we mean by tectonic activity and the large scale um, sort of effect on the landscape what we're looking at we're looking at slow gradual change and that's what gradational processes are all about it's those small changes but over a long period of time. Um, in the picture here, we've got um, bald rock, um, and in the bottom picture, you can see a group of people, that's me um, and some of my family, who uh, we've climbed this. This is an example of what a gradational process is. If you can look at that top picture, you can see those different colors on the rock. That's an indication of gradational change. That's has happened because water or rain has um, you know, fallen onto bald rock and because of um, gravity, it's pulled the uh, water down, but the water is actually starting to erode that rock. Um, only a small amount because it's a hard rock and those colors you can see is the chemical um, weathering um, of the water reacting with minerals in the the rocks so that's the type of processes that we're talking about um, so yeah that gives you an idea of what we're looking at today okay um i've got some questions here i just want you to pause the video um, you can answer those in your um corner notes feel free to copy out the question and then write them in um, let's look at weathering. So obviously weathering is the process of breaking down um, rocks and there's two main types. We've got physical and chemical. Um, physical is a slow uh, breakup of rocks into small particles and that's by obviously the force um, of um, either water or rocks. And then you've got chemical, so obviously that's um, water as well as anything in the atmosphere reacting with the um, minerals breaking down um, rocks so weathering does not just happen at the surface but also underneath our feet in the crust as well um, and there's um, a good example of that picture the 12 apostles about what weathering is um, again here is um, some questions i'd like you just to pause the video again copy these down into your cornell notes and answer them and then we've got mass movement now um, again this can be gradual um, as you can see we've got some slump in here in a picture what's happened um, a huge amount of rain has occurred and then what we do what happens um, the side of the mountain gets, because um, it's saturated, the surface can't bind onto it and we get this moving. This um, can take, this can be quite sudden. Um, and that's why we have mudslides, which is a, um, a quick form of mass movement, but slow mass movement would, call, would um, 
be something called soil creep. This is where we see um, soil moving down the bottom of mountains and hills, but we don't actually physically see it because it's so slow and it's the fault of gravity. What we can see, we can see sort of like imaginary, we can see lines going up and down the hill. That's what um, an example of mass movement, but over a long period of time. Okay, um, here's some more questions that I'd like you just to quickly pause the video, um, write them out, and then obviously answer them in your Cornell notes. Um, finally, um, we've got um, erosion and deposition. Um, obviously, erosion is the wearing down of um, material, as you can see in this picture here. This would be um, a meander or a bend in the river. That's what um erosion is and it's always wearing down the surface of the earth and then deposition is when we just drop off material and that's where we get um new land formed um, and literally because the, the the force of water cannot carry the load the and that's why it gets deposited um and there's obviously lots and lots of different ways and it depends on the um how water is made up so that's why we've got wind ice and rivers um, there's a link there to a um, video for you to have another little watch. What I'll do, I'll put, post that on Google Classroom and you can watch that um, later on. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at landscapes formed by rivers. Um, when we talk about um, any landscapes uh, formed by rivers, we call that a flu fluoval process. Um, so that's basically what was being the important agent for erosion there and that's waters there because of rivers. Um, there are um, three sort of main types of erosion here, hydraulic action, abrasion and corrosion. Um, what happens, we can see these big scars as you can see this picture here, this has all been created by um, rivers. Um, so river channels can um, cut valleys and that's a, a V-shaped valley. And we do have a different type of value, U shape, and that's caused by ice. But we'll be looking at that in a different um, video. But landscapes formed by rivers are normally a V shape, um, very steep sided hills. Um, and that's because of the river cutting down um, and the river channel, mainly because that's an area of soft rock compared to the sides of the river where there's harder rock. And those three processes that I talk about are the driving agents of that change but that change isn't seen overnight it can take thousands if not hundreds of thousands of years um, and that's what we mean by landscapes formed by rivers um, we've got some questions here that i'd like you just to now answer so if you pause the video you can put those in your cornell notes um, that's the end of the video um, We've covered quite a lot of information there, so I want you just to take some time, maybe rewatch the video, and make sure you've got those um, important parts, um, particularly those keywords, um, you know what they mean, um, and you've got those questions answered. Um, water is a, a big, big um, factor in, in shaping our, our landforms, and our graduation, graduation so I can't talk now. Graduational processes are very, very slow and take a long period of time. Um, they account for more mass movement than tectonic activity. Okay, I hope you enjoyed watching that video and um, you've answered those questions. Um, catch you soon. Remember to like and subscribe to my um, YouTube channel. Thanks. Bye.